Hi there, everybody. Dr. Macy Smith here. Thank you for joining us again today for part four of a four-part series on unpacking uh, senior engagement activities designed specifically for um, our aging population, older adult seniors with or without dementia. Um, so, you know, certainly I could not do this by myself. I want to thank Lexington Medical Center Extended Care for uh, donate, donating uh, the time and the talents of their certified activity professionals. We have just been so enlightened by the many different types of activities we can uh, incorporate in our day-to-day -day for our seniors and our older loved ones. This is our last day. Um, uh, so we had a really uh, fulfilling month of August on Mondays at 1 p.m. where we talked about various activities. I'm gonna make sure that each of you have the resources available. Make sure you inbox me or just drop a comment down below your email address or um, just some information if you wanna get more details or more information about the various activities that we've shared um, on these live streams for the past couple of weeks. So today, we are going to learn about some mentally stimulating activities and just some simple crafts that we can do. We know that our mind is only as sharp as the level of engagement we make available to it. So uh, joining us now, we have Debbie Bachnight. Debbie is actually responsible um, for getting the team together to be able to afford you and share this content with you. So Debbie has 35 years experience. She's absolutely a veteran in this industry. She's an activity consultant. Um, she has 10 years working with the special needs population, which is very, very commendable and absolutely something that we need for that population because we have to keep them engaged and have to keep them distracted from the negative um, elements they may face on the day to day. And she's also the president of the South Carolina Activity Professionals Association. Now let's get her into this conversation. There she is, Miss Debbie Balknight, the infamous Debbie Balknight, the guru of all gurus when it comes to activities to engage our older and senior population. How are you, Debbie? Great, thank you. Thanks for thank having you. me. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for putting this all together. All it was was one word, and you said, I'm down, we're gonna do it. And I will say that, you know, for the past few weeks, we have just been blessed with these very simple, very simple ideas that any of our seniors can do, whether they have dementia or not. So, you know, I want to commend you for the work that you're doing over at Lexington Medical Center Extended Care. Um, and you all also have the Carol Campbell place over there too, right? Yes, we do. So you all do, you know, we have a, I have a relationship with you, a longstanding relationship uh, with extent, Lexington Extended Care. And so uh, it was only right to have you a part of this conversation and to be able to, to share information and, and bless our loved ones who are caring for seniors, whether it's in a professional capacity or at home. So thank you so much for your time and your talent and putting this all together. So you're going to close us out this week with mentally stimulating activities. Yes, just as important as physical activity is to our body, brain exercise is important. So um, I'm gonna try to give you some ideas of things that you can do with your loved ones that are mentally stimulating. And I want you to, um, as I go through things, just think about your loved one. You may have to adapt um, depending on where they're at. Some things may be too easy, some may be too hard. Um, if they ever think something is silly, or childish, you know, you don't have to do that. Or if you have grandchildren, children, the neighbor's children, bring them in on it with you and have them um, help or have your loved ones make this for them. That way they don't feel uh, sometimes like it's childish. And another thing is it doesn't have to be right. They don't have to do it right. There's no right or wrong. If you give them a word search book, and they don't circle the words right or the wrong words, it does not matter. That your goal is not for them to get it right. Your goal is for them to be engaged and to be doing something. So don't ever worry about it's got to be right because it doesn't. Um, some other things that we like to do here, um, apps. If you've got any kind of tablet, this is just an uh, Amazon Fire tablet. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, you can use an iPad, you can even use your phone and download apps. But if you would just do a search for things like um, on here, we've got the yes, no game. Would you rather, never have I ever, 
um, guess the TV show. Uh, you can just go into the search engine of, on the app and just type in trivia, word games, matching games, and free apps will come up. You can download them and then you can just pull them up and play these games with your loved one. Your grandchildren can do it with them. Um, it's simple questions, you know, simple yes, no questions, or have you ever done this? Or would you rather um, go to the beach or go to the mountains? And that also leads to reminiscing and discussion groups. So apps, um, just tons of free stuff out there that you can use. Some other things that we like to do here, and normally we do big groups and we'll use a whiteboard, but you can just use a plain piece of paper. Um, one game would be categories. And if your loved one is higher functioning enough, you can actually give them the paper and what to do and you may not even have to sit there with them. But for like categories, you might give them the category is food and let's name as many foods as we can or, or you're gonna write them down. Um, it can be any topic, foods, occupations, boys names, you know, flowers, any topic you want to come up with. Um, and just see how many of those they can name. Uh, another one would be um, something ours love to do is creating words from a word. And um, this one, you just write a big word down. I'm just saying Charleston. And then you're gonna take those letters and they're gonna make other words from those. Um, that's a fun one ours love to do. Uh, the alphabet game, similar to categories, except you're using the alphabet. And again, you would take a topic, say um, food again, and just tell them, okay, name me a food that starts with the letter A, and then B and C and right on down the line. So all of those things get them thinking, get their mind working. Um, it's just great exercise for their brains. Another one we like is called Roll the Dice, and all of this, all of these instructions I'm going to send to Macy so you can get them from her. Um, this one, I picked up three of these big dice from the Dollar Tree, and what you do is there's questions, and there's a question for each number. Well, not really a question. Well, Debbie, you ain't showing them how to roll dice now, are you? No. Snake eyes? No gambling, no gambling. We do play bingo. <laughs> But um, anyway, like if they get number the number three, then the question is, my favorite television show is, and then you get them to tell you your favorite television show and maybe talk about it. So it's just a fun way to find out some of the favorite things in their lives. So I'll send all that to Macy too. And then some other things, of course, adult coloring, if you're not familiar with that, um, that's calming for the residents. Um, you can get pick up inexpensive uh, coloring books. Some of them may be too tedious, and so you may have to get some of the more children type coloring books. You can just be kind of careful and on um, what you get. And some sometimes you can find Dover is a company that puts out coloring books that have pictures that are more adult like, so they don't feel like a child. Um, and the colored pencils um, work real well with that. Then some other things I was going to show you are more along the craft line. So they're, they're crafts. It's also mentally stimulating, but they're going to be using fine motor as well, and they're simple. Um, one are collages. It's an easy thing to do. You just need old magazines, and this can turn into several different activities because the first thing you want to do are, one thing is these simple picture frames, um, and you just pick whatever theme you want, or they, you can have them pick a theme. What, what do you want to put on your frame today or your collage if you just want to do it on paper um, and have them tear out the pictures from the magazine. Then if they're able to cut, have them cut. Um, if, if you're concerned about the sharp scissors, you can get the blunt edged ones, or if you need to, you can cut it for them. And then you can make a collage on paper, um, you can buy these, the simple frames like this. These came from Michael's. They're 99 cents a piece. So it's not a lot of money in them, even if you toss them after they made them or just give them away, whatever. But um, another simple one is, um, and I'll send you these templates or faces. And we just, they just cut out pictures and just glue it down with the glue stick. And you've got her hair. 
And then I find a lot of them like to color the face in. So um, we usually give them some crayons and pencils too if they want to do that. And another um, simple project is- Now Debbie, that's good for folks if they have dementia or if they don't have dementia, right? Okay. Yes, we use it with, with all levels. Because I have a friend who's mm, probably mid 50, she colors. Yes, I love then, to go. Yeah. In fact, when we, you know, I've been at, at here at this facility for 35 years. And when I first came, coloring and baby dolls was taboo. You did, that was considered to be childish and you did not let the residents do it. And now we look at things differently as person centered. Um, it's what the resident and what the person enjoys doing. That's all that's important. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, I personally love to color and I don't mind coloring the children's books. Um, you know, and again, if it, if it makes them uncomfortable or they say, oh, this is childish. If you have younger children that can do it with them, then they're more likely to feel comfortable with it. Uh, oh, a wreath. These are very easy. All you need is just any kind of ribbon. A lot of these have the wire edges, a lot don't. It can be scraps. Um, anywhere from eight to 12 inches long, you just cut them. And then all that, you just get a wreath form. This one is, uh, is I don't know, grapevine, I guess. But there, you just have them tie them on. They just tie two knots, just keep going. And you can do, these we've made on the dementia units. And sometimes they'll do it in a little group of people and one will tie a few on and they'll pass it and somebody, not right now, because we're all isolated, but when we can do things together, that's something you can do um, even with your dementia residents or family member, I'm sorry, I've been here so long. And another simple project is called These Hands. And what we do is draw, put their hands on the paper and draw around them. And then we find out things about their life, what these hands have done. And for instance, this one says, these hands have barbecued, loved the beach, colored, cruised, took care of granddaughter, played piano, and so forth. Oh, and I it, love that. That's like a bragging board. Well, it is. It, it, these it, hands it, have done things you've never seen before, exactly. you know? And they, you know, they'll sometimes they want to color their hands, whatever they want to do. But yeah, this is, it's, it's similar to the journal thing in a way, but not as elaborate, not as many. But, you know, you can put it up and a person can look at that. If, if um, I'm no longer able to tell you about myself, you can look at this and know, oh, these are the things she enjoyed. And so these are some things you can talk to me about and it might trigger a memory. But that's kind of what I have in a nutshell. <laughs> Debbie I, Debbie, I appreciate that. Those things were very helpful. And I'll tell you, um, I, I don't like arts and crafts. I'm going to tell you why I don't like, I, I didn't, I thought I didn't, but seeing, engaging with you guys over this past, these past few weeks and really understanding how important these types of engagements are with our older adult population and in this time of uncertainty, because, you know, as family members and caregivers, we worry about our seniors and our older adult loved ones. And so we want to fix it and we don't know how to fix it. So um, I can do all of this. Everything that you all just talked about, I can do and I can do it without thinking, you know, having that whole mindfulness thing going on. You're just in the moment, you know. So what I'd like for you to do, Debbie, because you're so good at this, I want you to leave us with some inspiring words, you know. Oh, you know I, I, let me tell you, because I, I often tell people, especially with adults and the, the older adult learning principles, if we know that we're going, if we know how to get beyond something, if we know how to get through something um, and we can share that knowledge to other people, we're talking about mental capacity here and mental, it, 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 it stimulates us mentally because we have hope. Right. Something you said earlier, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was so profound. It doesn't have to be right. Right. They just need to be. Be yeah. in the moment. Be engaged. That I love that. Yeah, I can give you a story about that one. We've been doing a lot of hallway activities here because we are isolated. And one thing we do is bingo. And they just sit inside their doorways with their card on their bedside table. And I was playing a couple of weeks ago, and one of the uh, residents that normally doesn't play, she does have dementia, and she 
and uh, you know that we don't keep them from playing we'll help them well she rolled out so i gave her a card and i went about and i was going to go to help her and i noticed she had turned around and then she came back well once the game started i went to look at her car so i could help her and she had gotten an ink pen and she was coloring all the bing the squares on the bingo card so i just left her alone she was content she was engaged you know, no, she wasn't playing bingo the way you're supposed to play bingo, but she was happy and she was doing something. And by the time we finished bingo, she had the whole thing colored in. And, you know, she thought, you know, she had no idea she wasn't playing bingo. But you so, know what? She accomplished something. She colored that whole card. She did. She did. And she was content the whole time. She wasn't agitated. Um, you know, she wasn't you know, trying to wander or anything. She was just content doing that. But yeah, uh, it, it's the journey, not the process with this. And it, you're just trying to bring them some joy in the moment. Um, like Amber said a few weeks ago, sometimes you just have to walk with them. Sometimes you just have to um, go where they're at, just be where they're at um, in the moment. That's all that's important to them, giving them a little bit of joy, a little bit of happiness in that moment. Well, I appreciate you, Debbie. <laughs> I, I love that. The, well, well spoken. We can relate to that. And it's something that doesn't go over our head. We can understand it and we can put it into practice today. So I thank you so much for putting this all together and donating your time and your talent and your team. And uh, we look forward to those handouts. We look forward to those resources and I'll make sure you guys have those resources too. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you.